My name is Jerry Snyder. I'm going to be talking about a GUI that I have written over the last several years and used for many years. And the, its main focus is keeping code with the data that it manages. And it got the name GEB because the concept of using code to modify the database that is holding the same code reminded me of the self-reference at a higher level, which was the main theme of the Gödel Escher Bach book. The project began after I had lost particular code that I had written for some database stuff I was doing and decided that the only way to avoid that was to store the code inside the same database. And this was back in the days of SQLite 2. So I've been doing it for quite a while. And initially it had just spreadsheet-like displays of the files and tables and a little editing for the code. And over the years, I've added a lot more functionality to the point that I have not needed any other tools in quite a while. And all of the code is my own, except for the I show from Richard Schuchenwirt and Longest Commons subsequence from Kevin Kenny. And the first of those was used in a little help system. And the second one in the showing the history of the code. The two main tables that are used by GEB are tickle code, which holds the tickle code and each attached database can have its own so that the, it can have specialized code for whatever that database needs and things can be executed either manually by clicking on a button or via the unknown processor. And if there is a, an init row in the tickle code, it gets executed automatically when the file is attached. So that can take care of defining collation sequences, functions, and other things that are used no matter what's going to be done. The other main table is command history and they have that only in the main database and it saves all the single line entries from combo boxes like search and replace for tickle code and the patches to go back to earlier versions of the tickle code where clauses and the SQL and TCL for from dedicated windows and U and index definitions. There's an optional blobs table, which can be used to save files from the database from anything in the file system and recreate them. Windows used, the first three are for the data. There's one for the main database and any attached databases. And when clicking on a row in the file window, it can bring up a table window. And all of these I'll be showing in the live demo and a fairly complete alder table functionality. The next three are for the code. The edit run tickle is the main one and it can bring up search and replace window and view history to see earlier versions of the code. And then there are another window which shows use indexes and triggers and can be used for managing them. There's a fairly small help system and 
windows that let you run a single line of SQL or DCL code and show the results. And I deliberately left the root window unused so that it's available for other purposes. The startup is a very small boot file and it's only the things in bold that actually absolutely have to be in the boot file, have to package require SQL light, then create the DB command and then execute the init code from the main.tickle code. And the other things could be moved into the init function, but they seem like boot up stuff. So that's why they're here. And this shows how to attach the file. And I just picked one that some people might be familiar with. And I'll be showing that in the demo. I was born in Cincinnati and grew up there, got started with computers in high school and never had a job just as a programmer, but I've been using computers pretty much continuously ever since. Education is in physics and space physics and mathematics. My 36 career, 36 year career was in unmanned planetary exploration, mostly at the Jet Propulsion Lab. I've been retired in Sedona, Arizona since the end of 2006. And one of the main things that I do with my database stuff is running the award system for the American Iris Society. And the biggest project is the online voting system written in Ajax, which really seems to me should be a killer application because it really makes writing a GUI for the web as easy as writing a TK system locally. And now I'm going to switch to the live demo and background is part of our the view from our home. The picture was taken yesterday. And so sometimes it's hard to get work done with scenery like this available right away. Now this is the edit run tickle window, which shows hunks of code. These are the different rows in that table that contain all of the tickle code. And it's a little under 300 kilobytes of data. And can go from one to another and then can, can go back and forth between them. In viewing history, there's in this file, there's no history for init. But there is for the view history routine. And this shows the data as of 11.05.22.06.18. This shows the pseudo patch to get from the next version back to this one. And the bottom window shows the complete patch to get from the older version to the current one. And can't actually do anything with this code, but if I make a mistake, I can go back and see what worked earlier. The search function 
is brought up by a button. And if, say, I wanted to see every example of the word command set, click on find selection, and it picks up what was selected in the edit run tickle window. And over here, it shows every row, which includes the word set. And on the right hand side, all of the instances of set in the init code. And in searching for things, the default is exact, but get, there's an option for no case or use glob or regular expression, wildcards, and then can replace just the highlighted instance or everything in this code row or everything everywhere or everything except the main. And by default, confirmation is required, but can turn it off and clobber stuff if you want. Now the this shows a table window for fossil and shows how many entries each table has and the column definitions and by clicking on a row it brings up a table window showing the data by OID order you can sort something by say name and then if I wanted to find a test you can rapidly jump to the first entry named test and if I use a where clause to restrict. From this, you can see that I'm not familiar really with the like function because it took me a couple tries to get it right. But I can show only the those with name like tool that start with tool. And at the top, the thing shows that there are 109 tools out of the 2294 entries in the table. And let's see, I guess that is pretty much what I wanted to show in the live demo. So let's, uh, I wanted to go back to this because I have uh, available the, a link to my code. There's a bit.ly short link to available to a Google Drive folder that has the database with the, the GEB data, the bootstrap file that I showed to things that people might not be interested in, uh, not quite up to date SQLite fossil and the tickle kit that I run stuff with as tickle decay 8.6.10 and the current version of SQL Lite and a somewhat expanded version of this presentation. For the one that I just gave, I wanted to elim eliminate some of the stuff that I'd be talking about later. And if anybody uses it and has any comments, bug reports or anything, it 
My email address is gcsnide at gmail.com. That was great. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me actually check to see if you have any questions for you. Does anyone have any questions for him and would like to raise their hand? We have one, so actually it went away. I just granted you permission, Mr. Fellows. Let me stop sharing. All right, perfect. So um, I think we had a question, but they're going to put it on to the Q&A. So Donald asked, um, have you looked into small talk style code explorers for TK? Uh, no, I, I have heard of small talk, but don't really know anything about it. No. 